Thanks everybody for joining me in the class today. My name is Steph Maraca. I'm a fine artist from Pittsburgh. I do uh, realism landscape paintings, uh, mostly golf courses and uh, national parks, but a bunch of other stuff okay. in between. Yeah, I do live event painting at weddings too, and I do, I do pet portraits a little bit. Uh, I do some human portraits, but it's definitely not my expertise. <laughs> mostly landscapes. All right. Uh, so. In this course, it's going to be about two hours. I'm going to try to do a little uh, Q&A session at the very end. And at the end of each social media topic that we talk about, I'll put a little question uh, section in there as well if you guys, because I'm going to throw a lot of info at you. <laughs> so then you can just you know, write down if you have a little question. And as soon as we finish covering one thing, then you guys just you know, be like, oh, what was that again? All right, so I'm going to talk about my background a little bit first so you guys can understand why selling artwork online is my route that I took. And then uh, I'll talk about how you guys can all start to uh, earn money by selling your artwork online. I graduated from the University of Pittsburgh in 2012. Uh, I was in arts and science courses. I got a degree in geology and a degree in studio arts. Uh, and I took off with a geology degree and I was a geologist for five years where I was traveling a lot out of state and <laughs> initially it was fun because I got to see a lot of cool places but then it became really old really quick so I spent a lot of time in hotels and uh, the last year I was in geology I really picked up painting again and I started just painting in hotel rooms at night and I uh, decided I would rather do painting full-time than geology full-time because if I was gonna put 80 hours into a work week I might as well do it painting not sitting by myself in a remediated, you know, like project site that's, you know, got contaminants and nasty stuff. I might as well be somewhere where I'd like to be doing what I'd like to do. <laughs> so that is when I made that decision. And then uh, just over one year ago is when I did the full-time transition back to being an artist. I have a, a full year of, uh, you know, my um, income data to give to you guys. And that's what I'm going to base this whole uh, presentation off of, just showing you where my money's come from. And, in real life versus online, and then I'm gonna break it down to which different social media platforms made me the most money. All right, so here are some of my pieces, just to get an idea of what I do. I do realism golf course landscapes, and this is a, a golf course in Illinois, and I do national park landscapes as well, and I do you know, a bunch of other stuff too, but these uh, are some of my favorite things to work on. All right, so just very general pie chart. In person, my uh, gross income is only 13%. From, this is from family and friends, from uh, being in art exhibitions in person and doing like pop-up galleries, that kind of stuff where I'm making a sale in person with someone that has no idea I have all this artwork online. And then 87% of my gross income from the last year is from online. So that was, <laughs> and um, I guess so, I guess if I can explain that, um, because I was a traveling geologist, I didn't spend any time in Pittsburgh. I didn't build any connections with artists that are already living in Pittsburgh. I didn't have time to go to galleries out of state or in state because I was working long hours. And I did have a lot of time to spend on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook while I was working. I was sitting there alone while the rig was going and like getting all these samples for me and I'm waiting for them to bring me samples. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna scroll through Instagram. So that's, you know, I had all the time to learn all these social media platforms and see how other artists were becoming successful on it. And I started to develop my own pages and invest my own time into it. And that's why this chart looks like this. <laughs> Next year, this chart might look a little bit more in person um, but you know, right now it's mostly online. All right. So this breaks that chart down even further. So this is only looking at my gross income earned online. And these are the different media platforms that I have made money on. So Instagram was almost half of my income this in the last 12 months and Reddit was 14%. I just sold a few paintings on Reddit last week. So that number went up a little bit and everything else went down a little bit. But, uh, when I made this on Tuesday, this, these were the numbers. <laughs> uh, so Fine Art America, about 2%. Fine Art America is a site where you can post prints of your artwork. Um, so Fine Art America is low because it's only prints and the originals are what's sold on other sites. And then Wedding Wire is a site for um, wedding vendors. So people that are looking for photographers, um, painters, that's what I you know, advertise on my Wedding Wire site. So uh, that might not apply to everyone. If you do live painting, then Wedding Wire might be good for you. Uh, Sachi is an artist website uh, that is kind of like a social media site for among artists, so other fine artists can talk with each other. I uh, haven't sold a lot on Sachi yet. Um, 
Satchi and other sites for artists seem like the more artwork you put up, the more sales you get. And because I put a lot of time into paintings, I can't whip out a painting a day. Uh, I don't make as many sales because I only have like 16 to 30 pieces on those sites. But people that have thousands of pieces on those sites make a lot of sales. Mm -hmm. So it depends on your artwork. If you do watercolors that are pretty quick and you can whip out a few in a week, you know, I know like, it's not, I know it depends. It depends on your style. It definitely depends on your style. Yeah, if you, if you have a style that's, you know, like very expressive brush strokes and you, yeah, right, right. <laughs> and that's why like abstract and like expressionist type pieces like make way more sales on those websites because they can whip out so many so quickly. And you know, some people are looking for that style too. And then so YouTube and Amazon and then Facebook as well. So I'm gonna dive into all of these and uh, you guys, um, Keep, keep track of what you think is gonna be the most useful for you and uh, start with that. I would say start with one social media site and build your artwork up on there. See if, how you feel, if it's starting to be successful, if you like it, if you think it's frustrating, then maybe switch to another one. But I recommend like don't make a page for all of these at once because otherwise that's gonna be like 50 hours of your week just trying to manage these pages. <laughs> you gotta do like one at a time to get yourself going. Okay, so another important thing um, with selling your artwork online uh, that and that has to do with my background, is finding your target audience. So you guys all know how like finding your target audience for selling your artwork is very important. If you, so your target audience would be the people that are gonna buy your artwork. So I do landscape paintings that take a lot of time and I use oil paint and my materials cost is pretty high, you know, for oil paint compared to, you know, maybe watercolor paper isn't as expensive as the canvas, large canvas. Uh, so my paintings are expensive uh, and I, my first year when I was trying to sell in person and I, that 13% of my income as a person, I was trying to go to like craft fairs and craft shows and sell my oil paintings there. And I, that was not my target audience, okay? <laughs> Your target audience at a craft fair is someone that brings cash with them and wants to buy little handmade pieces of things that they can take home and put on, in their house. They, they're not gonna buy multi-hundred dollar oil paintings to a thousand dollar oil paintings, you know, to put in their house at a craft fair. So that was another reason why that 87% online is my sales because online these people find you you just have to post in the correct place and then they'll find you you have to use the right hashtags you have to post in the right communities and then those people will find you and they'll reach out to you so just to uh, explain how i was able to create this chart people will message me directly on some of these social media platforms so someone will send me a message on instagram and say hey i saw that painting you just posted is it for sale and I'll say, yes, it is. And I'll send them a link to the information on my website to buy the painting. Uh, and sometimes I'll just get a commission request on my own site. I have a, um, my own artist website. I have a form if you'd like to order a commission or if you'd like to buy an original, I have a little thing that sends me an email. Uh, so if they send me directly from my website, I'll ask them, hey, where did you hear about me? And they'll say, YouTube or Reddit or something like that. And I'll be like, okay. So that's how I was able to collect this data. All right, so first I'm gonna talk about Instagram. And like I mentioned before, that was, 48% of my gross income from the last 12 months. All right, so Instagram is all about the visuals. It's all photos, some videos now, um, but you basically just scroll down uh, people that you follow and you can see their images and you can like them, you can comment on them, you can send them to your friends uh, via messaging or you can save them. And so. Is there an app? It is an app. So yes, Instagram is an app and it's also, there's also a desktop site, but most people use the app on your phone. Good question. All right. So yes, yeah, so you can scroll through feeds. You can see different photos that people post or their little videos. You put a little caption under it. Uh, and Instagram has an algorithm. All of these social media platforms have an algorithm and that learning the algorithm is very important for your post to get up because the more views you get, the more sales you're gonna get. So if you can get your algorithm, you can figure out the algorithm for that social media platform, then you can get your post to be viewed more and you'll get more sales because more people are looking at your stuff. So Instagram's algorithm is based on a number of factors. It's based on how many followers you have. It's based on how many people are interacting with the post you just posted within the first 20 minutes of you posting it. So like if a bunch of people comment under it as soon as you post it, then it's like, ooh, this is a popular post. I'm gonna put it to the top so everybody wants to see this post and then more and more people keep interacting with it. It's gonna look at your hashtags. It's gonna see like are, are you getting a lot of people looking at your post from your hashtags. So like there's a bunch of stuff that's involved with the algorithm. And there's also like, they don't give out the algorithm. Like they don't say, you just, you just have to like, you know, trial and error, see what does well. And you're like, okay, yeah, that's in the algorithm. And so Instagram gives you one link 
on your profile. That's something that kind of sucks about Instagram. So some social media platforms, if someone comments on a post, you can put a link below it that'll say, hey, here's this painting you're looking at, go ahead, click this link and it'll take you to my site where you can buy it. Instagram, you can't do that. Instagram, you get one link in your profile and that's it. So I recommend for that link, you have a link for people to be able to buy your paintings very easily. So it's either your artist website or if you have a shop like on Art, uh, Art Finder or on Fine Art America, link them directly to wherever they can buy stuff immediately. Don't link them to like a bio where there's some side page where they have to find to buy, to buy your stuff. If you're trying to make sales, make it very easy for them to be able to buy stuff. All right, so here, uh, now I will give you a visual. <laughs> so this is my Instagram page. Uh, you can see at the top here, this is my name is the underscore painting underscore stoof. So you want to have a name that is going to be clear for people to understand, uh, like your first name, last name, then art. Like I could have done Steph Maraca art, but my business is the painting stoof. So I just made the painting stoof. Uh, it tells you how many posts you had, how many followers you have. So Instagram is a popularity contest basically. And you want to have a lot of followers and you don't necessarily need to follow a lot of people, but you, more people will follow you if you're following them. So it's like a big, big popularity contest. And so another thing with the algorithm is that if you have more than 10,000 followers then you probably go higher up on the algorithm. Let anybody who wants to follow you connect with you. Yes. So that's the thing. So you could set your page to private. That's a, that's a setting in Instagram. But if you're selling artwork, I don't recommend doing that. Um, but it, what you can do is not give any personal information. Don't use your regular phone number. You can make like a second phone number and don't use your home address. So you could put your home address or your studio address on your page. I just say Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So they know where I'm from. I don't want to give anybody my real phone number or that. So I actually made a second phone number. There's a um, Google voice is an app. You do. Okay. Yes. So you get a second phone number and it's free. You can get it. All right. Yes. So going back on the page. So your profile picture, you want to have a picture of yourself uh, so that, you know, occasionally you'll find an art collector that like doesn't want to know anything about the artist. They just want the work and they want to keep that a secret. They don't want to know anything about the person that made it. But in general, most people want to put a face with the art. Most people want to feel like they could connect with you and bond with you. And by putting a picture of yourself as your profile page, they're like, okay, this is a real person making this art. And another thing uh, is to include pictures of yourself in your posts while you're working on something in progress, post photos of that, post uh, pictures of your completed artworks as well. Good quality photos. That is the most important thing on Instagram. Uh, so yes, okay, one more thing. So the about section, you wanna have that, uh, like a brief description of what you do. So I say realism, golf course landscapes, and natural landscape paintings from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And then I also just write what my YouTube name is on there so people can find my YouTube account. All right, so we got that. Good quality photos. All right, um, can you guys tell me what would not be a good quality photo? Like if you were gonna post a picture of your painting, what is something that people would be turned away from? Or something that you maybe were like, oh, that wasn't a very good photo they posted. Too much water. Yeah, yeah, if there's like too much going on, or like if, even if it's like not cropped right on your painting, like if you can see side things that aren't, that are distracting, you don't want that in your painting, in your pictures. What else? Good lighting, yes, good lighting is important. Other people, yeah, if you are like painting outside or something and you have like random bystanders just like standing and talking, that might be distracting. So basically you want people to be able to just see what you're trying to show them. My problem is I can't take very good pictures of my painting. Yeah. And I try to do it in the kitchen, on the floor. Yeah. The, you know, where, where, what would you suggest? Have to take yeah. it outside? Sometimes I take mine outside on a, on a day where it's cloudy. Like I'll wait until there's a cloudy day because the sunlight will give you weird shadows and it like does weird things with the contrast too when you're taking a photo of your work outside. I've noticed a lot of people also take pictures where there's a glass covering their artwork and it has a big glare. So yeah, so if, if you could take the glass off just for a photo, I know it's time consuming, but <laughs> the, be the better photos you can take. Right, take a photo before you frame it. Right, so yes, yeah, so those are some things that you wanna think about when you're posting your photos. Um, include work in progress photos, photos of yourself in there. And then you wanna use the hashtag. So Instagram is all about the hashtag. So under your photo, I'll go to the next slide here. Yep, so um, here's an example of one of my posts, okay? So I have, you get up to 30 hashtags per post. If you use more than 30 hashtags, it's gonna post your image without everything you just typed. And then you have to retype everything and you have to refine all your hashtags. So it's very frustrating. I used to do that all the time. I'm like, why did I do that? I was like, oh, I did more than 30 hashtags. So you can only get 30 hashtags um, and you wanna- 
Oh, yes. So a hashtag. So you guys know the pound symbol, right? Yeah. That's the hashtag. And then you put a uh, word after it. And if you have multiple words, like I have uh, palm trees, which could be two words, but you combine it. You don't, don't use any spaces. If you use a space, then it's going to only do the first word. So it's, you do a hashtag, no space, and then the word right after it. So I did, for this one, this is a painting of Maui that I did. Uh, it's a sunset in Maui, Hawaii. So I say has, hashtag Hawaii, hashtag sunset, hashtag palm trees, hashtag tropical, hashtag sun, hashtag sunsets, hashtag painting, hashtag oil painting, hashtag realism painting. So things like that that are, when you see this post, what do you think of? Because what, when other people are looking for, they're going to look for these hashtags. Uh, just, just like browsing around, you know, they're gonna be like, oh, I want to see some sunsets. So they'll type in sunsets in their search bar and anybody that used the hashtag sunset, even if they're not following that person, all their posts are going to show up. So if someone's looking for sunsets, this would show up on that sunset, big, big, long feed of everybody's suns, everybody that hashtag sunset. And so, uh, the more recent ones are going to be at the top. So uh, under the, so, yeah, this is where Instagram gets really confusing. There's a popular one and a recent one. So this would show up under recents at the top. Uh, so then people would then find it. They could click on this picture or they'd click on your page and then they could see all of your other artwork. They could decide if they want to follow you and keep seeing more of your artwork, or they could send you a direct message and say, Hey, is this painting available to purchase? Uh, all right. So that's, that's what the hashtags are. Now let's talk a little bit more about different parts of the post. So tag your location. So Instagram allows you to tag a location for your photo. And so this is a painting of Maui. I didn't paint it in Maui, but it's a painting of Maui. So I tagged Maui thinking that anyone that's looking under this location would be able to see this photograph. So the same thing is uh, people searching for specific hashtags, people can search for specific locations. Uh, I'll, I'll do this. Like if I want to look, if I want to go travel to like a vacation somewhere, I'll look up that spot and see if any resorts are posting nice, nice uh, pictures of their resort. I'll be like, Ooh, I want to stay there. You know? So I, I use that for myself. All right. So yep. Good quality photo of your artwork. Uh, so all social media, you want to be engaged with your audience. You don't want to just, especially since we're not famous artists yet. If we were super famous, then we wouldn't have to respond to anyone, but we're just starting out with the social media. So whenever someone comments or likes your post, it'll give you a notification on your page. Uh, so then you'll want to click on their profile. It'll say so-and-so liked your post. So you'll click on their name and that'll take you to their page. And then I recommend you like one of their posts or comment under one of their posts too, so that you're engaging with your followers. All right. That's a straight comment, it's not a hashtag. Right, yeah, that's a comment. Yeah, so, yep, so you got hashtags are something that you post yourself, and then people can comment under your page, or they can like your, your post there too, yeah. All right, so yeah, ask a question to interact with your fans. So when you're posting something on Instagram, uh, like I said, that algorithm is going to see how people are interacting with your post. So if you are going to type a, a question in your little caption under your image here, then um, people are going to want to reply because they're going to be like, oh yeah, I want to answer that question. They asked me a question. So then you'll get a lot of comments. So I got 48 comments on this post. So I said, this Maui sunset painting commission is complete. What is your favorite Hawaiian island to watch the sunset? And then I got 48 comments. So that wasn't like my most generic question. Usually you want to ask a question that anybody can answer. But for this one, I was like, sure, people that have been to Hawaii, where, what's your favorite island to watch the sunset from? So then I got a bunch of comments, either replying to that question or just commenting on the artwork. And then because I got a lot of comments, the algorithm puts me up higher and then more people like my posts and it gets um, more views from people. All right, so uh, I'm not going to go into this too much, but basically you can buy followers and you can buy likes. You, you just pay like a program 50 to $70 a month and they'll have, they'll have these bots, which is like a machine and a computer run your Instagram account for you and like fake like people's pages and fake follow them and then unfollow them. So like if someone, it, you might get a lot of fake followers, especially using the hashtags because people there, those bots use the hashtags to find people. So if someone like l follows your account, you don't have to follow them back because they might be fake. If you know, like just follow other accounts and like other accounts that you really sincerely appreciate their artwork. You know, you don't, yeah. yeah. I don't recommend buying the bots thing. I mean, if you really want to build it quickly, you can, but you're not connecting with people on a personal level. Like, you do building it organically. So uh, it's a, you know, it's your call. Um, I don't really even know any companies that do this, so <laughs> you can look it up online. So if you did want to do this, when someone follows you, you could send them a message and just say, Hey, thanks for following me. Let me know if you're interested in buying any of my artwork. Here's a link to my site or just say the link to my sites in my profile. 
And also reply to comments. Just keep engaging with your fans and interacting with them. All right, so yeah, that was a ton. Does anybody have any immediate questions? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. How and valuable do you find the analytics? Uh, so yeah, did I not talk about that? I didn't. Let me go back a little bit. So I do find the analytics helpful sometimes because it tells me what posts are doing better than other posts. So like I noticed that um, like posts, posts of just my completed artwork do better than work in progress photos and more people look at the ones that are like completed artwork pieces. Uh, so it does give, give you an idea of which types of posts are doing better, um, but I, I, it doesn't really give me data about like who's buying, you know. <laughs> I just get direct messages and stuff from people. So here's insights. So um, Instagram will let you make a personal page or a business page whenever you're setting up your account and you want to set up a business page because if you set up a personal page, you don't get analytical data. It's just like, here's what's going on in other people's accounts. But your business page tells you how many people view your profile in a week. It tells you... Um, down here, so it gives you post insights. So for every one of your posts, it gives you information. So it'll say here, you got 123 likes, which is public, you know that. You got three comments, which is public, you know that. One person messaged this directly to another person. That's something you wouldn't get. That's information you wouldn't get on the personal page. And then uh, it'll tell you how many people archived it or saved it. It tells you how many people visited your profile just by clicking on this picture. So someone saw this picture on the hashtag or they saw it, saw it on that home screen page and then they decided to click on your profile after seeing that. So that's helpful too. And then reach is just how many people this post reached. It doesn't mean that they clicked on it. It means they may have scrolled past it, but they, it reached them. So it gives you some helpful information. Um, you don't have to pay any extra money for that. It's just part of a business account. Uh, so I think it helps you in little ways, but it, it hasn't helped me to make more money, I would say. But it's just like, if you're curious. Is that the extent of it, or is it graphs, like more graphs? And stuff like uh, that? You can get graphs. You can get some graphs that'll tell you uh, what are the most popular times of the data post based on your past data. So that is helpful too. But I've just found that posting between 3 to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday is the, most, is the best time to post. And then uh, on weekends between like 12 and 2 p.m are the best times to post. Uh, and that's just because more people are active on the site at that time. Weekends are, in general, don't get as many people. Usually weekdays are more popular. Sunday is definitely the least popular. I think because Sunday most people are like relaxing with their family and not on their phones as much. Other questions about Instagram for now? Is Instagram the one where it makes all the pictures uh, it used to, it used to, uh, now it doesn't now. So now see this one's not a square. It, so it did, uh, I think like two years ago they stopped that and, um, you can, yeah. So there are other apps that you can use to crop your photos before you put them on, on Instagram. Another thing I didn't talk about is that there are a lot of different filters you can apply to your paintings when you're posting on Instagram that'll change the lighting and the saturation, but you don't want to go crazy with those because you don't want your artwork to look different on Instagram than it would look in real life. Because if someone is interested in buying it and then they get it in real life, they're like, this doesn't look like that, you know? So. <laughs> what resolution um, photos? Uh, Instagram is, it doesn't have to be a very big file. It's because it, most people are looking at it on their phone where it's like a two inch by two inch square. So it really doesn't have to be that big for Instagram. Uh, and if you do post a huge file, it'll bring it down. It, they'll cut down the size. Yeah, yeah. All right, so back to our pie chart. Now we're gonna talk about Reddit. So uh, as I mentioned briefly, I read it, that Reddit number's a little higher because I had a couple sales last week. Um, but yeah, Reddit was about 14% of my gross income. And so do you guys post on Reddit or do you just like to read things? Or do you even go on? I've never known. You don't go on, but you, you know what it is? Okay. All right, so. It is. It's another app. Um, I don't. Is this a, is this on the computer too? Is there a desktop version? I haven't even tried the desktop versions, but I, I only look on my phone. So Reddit is great for seeing what's trending in the news, um, new memes. You guys know what memes are? Yeah, like new funny memes are trending, uh, different topics that you're interested in, and uh, different like things that are happening in those topics. Uh, so. Reddit is, I really think Reddit is one of the best platforms for selling your art because you're reaching your target audience so easily on Reddit. So uh, let me show you how Reddit works real quick. So this is what a Reddit page looks like if you just go on Reddit. So there's like a um, thing that's like for you, your home page, the news, things that are happening and trending. And then you can go over here, this is your profile. So mine is the painting stoof. And then these are different communities that you can follow. And that is the best part about Reddit is that you can 
post your artwork in specific communities where people are already searching and looking for this type of information. So I, I follow national parks, I follow golf, golf courses, art, paintings, oil paintings. So I follow all of these communities and I post my artwork directly into that community. So in Instagram, when you post something, it goes out to the whole world and your hashtags help people to find it. On Reddit, you're not posting it this to the whole world, you're posting to only people in that community. So people are already looking for that kind of thing. So you're reaching your target audience so easily on Reddit. And another great thing about Reddit is that you can put links in, in comments. You can leave all kinds of links. So if someone asks you about a print of this piece, you can leave a link directly to buy that. If someone asks a comment about commissions, you can send them a link directly to your commissions page. You can put as many links as you want in Reddit posts. All right, so yes, Reddit's very interactive whenever you post something on there. Uh, so another important thing, make sure it's very good quality image. You don't want to have a bad quality image or it's not going to get up. So Reddit has upvotes. That's like the like on Instagram. It's an upvote on Reddit. And they also have comments like uh, Instagram would have. So the more upvotes you get, that puts it higher up on the popular page. More people that upvote it, more people that comment on it, it's going to put it higher up on top of that community. So I'll try to do like giveaways on here. I'll just show pictures of my completed artworks uh, in the specific communities. And uh, a lot of them I'll put in the painting group. And I haven't gotten a lot of direct business from that, but it is nice to like connect with other artists that are you know, interested in your work and you, you know, connect with them. You can find them on other social media too. So yeah, you get a lot of comments and you wanna make sure you reply to the nice comments. Sometimes you get some not nice comments on Reddit. Reddit's very, uh, people are very opinionated on Reddit. Don't reply to those people. You don't want to spread any negativity because you want to you know, keep your professionalism while you're online. You want to keep your image clean. So just don't, don't respond to the negativity. And sometimes when people say negative things, other people will like go and attack them. And you can just like sit back and eat your popcorn and be like, okay, this is great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So yeah, you don't, another great thing about Reddit is you don't have to have a lot of subscribers or followers on your own page. So you just have to post in that community and it has to become popular in that community, that one image. And then you can get a ton of sales just from posting one image. So on Instagram, you have to have a lot of followers for your, I mean, your, your picture could do very well in the algorithm without a lot of followers, but it's going to be like nothing like it would be on Reddit. Like on Reddit, I have 60 followers, I think. And I've had posts where I made $3,000 from people buying things just from one post. So your Reddit is, is like, can be very, very good. Is it community specific? So if, mm -hmm. if you are elevated um, by, the, by the ups. Uh -huh. The upvotes, it, yeah. It does not correlate to a different community. Right, yep, it's only in that community. So you can, you can post the same picture. Yes, yeah, it's, very, it's only for that community. So you can post uh, that same picture a few times in different communities. So like I... Yeah, yeah, or different ones in different communities. So I'll post that same, I posted that same um, golf course painting here in, um, I posted it in the painting community and I posted it in the golf community. By the end of 24 hours, the golf, in the golf community, it had 1,600 upvotes and it had like 60 comments, okay? And then in the painting group, it had 30 upvotes. So people were like in painting, they're like, okay, yeah, that's nice, but I don't golf, so. <laughs> but then in the golf one, people were like, oh, wow, I've played that course before, you're bringing back great memories. Ooh, I really wanna buy a, you know, a print of this or something. Do you do other golf course paintings? So people get really interested if it's in a specific community where they're you know, more likely to get in, involved with that piece. <laughs> All right, so that's like a brief overview of Reddit. So it's yeah, very different from Instagram, um, but you know, can has its ups and downs. You know, like I said, like you get some really interactive, very opinionated people on Reddit, but you can make a lot of money. So it's like if you can deal with some negative comments, then it's it's worth it. And then in Instagram, it's um, you know, you, I tend to post more often on Instagram. Like I'll post maybe three to five times a week, and then on, on Reddit, I'll post like once a month. Did you post the price on? The, the what? When you posted the painting. Oh, the price. Oh, so yeah. So in, in the comment about like the, um, the description for it, I don't put the price. You can if you want to, but I, I, if someone asks about it, then I'll send them a link to the site where it has the pricing Somebody information. Asked, and then you said, and they said, blah, blah, blah. Right. I don't even just say the, pr the price on Reddit because a lot of times people only look at your artwork because they want to know what the price is. <laughs> and so if you post 
the price right there, then they'll just scroll and they won't ask any questions or anything. But if you say, oh, here's a link to information about all my original paintings and their pricing, then they have to click the link and then everybody else has to click that link. So it's building up the popularity on the post too. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> I do both. So um, I, I usually I'll, I'll frame pieces that I'm going to put up in exhibitions and I'll just leave that frame on. I don't go crazy with framing. Like I don't go to frame shops and get like $300 frames on them. I get like $50 frames maybe on my pieces. And then uh, if someone would like to buy a piece, I ask them if they'd like it with the frame or if they'd like me to take the frame off. And sometimes they say, oh, I work with the framer. I don't want the frame on that. You can keep it. And sometimes they ask for a discount if I take the frame off and so they can put their own frame on and I'll do that too. Um, and sometimes they're like, oh no, I love it with the frame can you send it with the frame sometimes people will buy a painting because the frame fits their living room <laughs> they're like oh yeah that black frame would look really good in my living room I'll take that piece it's like you know you could put any painting in that right <laughs> yeah so let's uh, nope yeah <laughs> how long do you wait um, to varnish your oil paintings uh so oil paintings I wait I, so the way that I do my oil paintings is I use very thin layers of paint I don't like do really thick textured oil paintings. I'll actually thin down my paint with uh, citrus solvents while I'm working so I can get a lot of detail and fine lines. So it dries pretty quickly because I thin it out while I'm working. Uh, so most of my paintings are, are dry fully within a week. So it's usually about a week after oh, I'll varnish them. Yeah. So that's another thing to think about is um, how long is it going to take for your painting to be totally ready to ship out and have ready for a client when you know when you're posting about it so you make sure you know if someone's asking about buying it say like oh yeah it's it's fine you can buy it uh it'll be ready to ship in a week just make sure you like up front say that, <laughs> what about shipping, now that, you brought that yes up. so shipping on my artist website i now i i didn't used to include shipping and people didn't seem irritated by it but it definitely wasn't as convenient for them so now i include shipping in my pricing and if someone lives locally then i say oh i'll just take $20 off that because it's a small piece and I don't have to ship it to you. So I just include shipping now in my pricing and then I, yeah, just. What's your favorite way to ship? Uh, if it's a small piece, I use USPS. It's easy. And you package it yourself. They've done pretty good. I mean, knock on wood, I haven't had anything get messed up while shipping it yet. And uh, the insurance is very cheap too. Like uh, $500 of insurance on a painting is only like six extra dollars to ship it. So it's, it's good to get the insurance just in case, um, but larger pieces I send via FedEx. I don't use UPS. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to use UPS for geology jobs, sh shipping samples, and I've had samples get messed up, so I don't use UPS, yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, everybody ready? Yep. All right, great. So we talked about Instagram and Reddit. Next, we're gonna talk about Facebook. So one person has a Facebook art page here, right? Yes, that's it, okay. How do you have a personal page and a... Yes, so I have my own page that is, yeah, like all of, you know, me, and then I have one that's the painting stew, if that's only art stuff, I don't post any of my partying outfits on there, or my, you know, <laughs> yeah, none of my bikini pictures, yeah, that doesn't go on there, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, um, it's called a page. So you know how, um, like, local businesses, even the coffee shop, Originals has a, f a page. You can like the page. There will be a uh, on your home screen. I think there's a button that says create page, oh. and you just create your own page, and you can yeah. So then you can um, create the page. You want to make a picture for it. Here, I'll go in here. Um, so this this is what my art page looks like on Facebook. So yeah, you put a picture for the profile, you have a banner that goes across the top, similar to a regular page, uh, but it's a business account. So. Um, you can have people leave reviews. You can just like message your friends, be like, hey, can you leave some reviews about my art business so that other people that don't know me can see that I'm, you know, have some good reviews. Uh, you, you can organize the page however you want, like what goes up on this side, uh, like tabs for people to click on. So you can say you want your photos to be up here or you want your about section to be up here. Uh, basically, like they're pretty good with letting you rearrange the layout however you'd like. And another great thing about Facebook is that you can link it to your Instagram account. So if you make a uh, Instagram page, you can, when you're posting, there, if you look below your post right before you hit 
post or share, there's a thing at the bottom that says also post to Facebook and it'll also post to Facebook and you can, you have to make sure that you say you want to post to your art page, like a specific page. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you just link those and then uh, you can make it automatically do that too within your settings on Instagram. But yeah, it's nice that you can uh, link those together because I don't have to spend a lot of time on Facebook. I can just post on Instagram, it'll go to Facebook and then people will still message me on Facebook. It's like you're reaching both audiences by posting once. So that, yeah, because the same people own Instagram and Facebook, so. All right, um, create photos of your artwork. Yeah, create photo albums for your viewers. So have little photo albums uh, in the photos section and I'll categorize them. So I'll say, here are all my commissions I completed this year in a photo album. And then I'll say, um, here are all my golf course landscapes I completed this year in an album. Here are all my national park landscapes. And every time I finish a new one, I'll add it to that photo album. So then every time you uh, add that, photo to an album, it'll pop up as a notification for everybody that likes your page. So they'll be like, oh, she has a new artwork posted, and then they can look at everything that's also in that album too. So that's how uh, a lot of people find interest in my pieces, because they uh, are, you know, are continuing to see things as I'm working on them, and then they'll either message me asking about buying a piece or getting a commission. Uh, I, I mostly get commission orders from Facebook. I think Facebook is more personalized and it's people that know you that but like aren't your best friend but like wouldn't have asked you about your art, artwork unless they knew you did it on Facebook. So like they find your stuff on Facebook and they're like, oh, I only live like 20 minutes away from you and like you're a cool local artist. Would you make something for me to give as a gift to my dad for Christmas? And you're like, oh yeah, sure, I can do that. And then you send them like your pricing and ask what size they'd like and then like, you know, you start that whole process. So yeah, I, I found that most of my business on Facebook comes from people that I know that wouldn't have known that I am an artist unless they found me on Facebook. Encourage viewers to share your posts. So that's another good thing about Facebook is that because it's a nice community of a lot of people that you know and they know you already, they're more likely to share your artwork if you ask them to share it. So if you post a picture of a recently completed completed painting and you say, uh, please share this post to let all your friends know about this, this piece is available, then they're more likely to do it because they want to help you out. You know, people feel good when they do something nice for you. So like, like people like to share your stuff. Um, <laughs> What else? And then another thing you can do, I'm going to touch on this later, is that uh, you can do giveaway contests where you give away like a small print or like a, a small thing. You don't want to give away a nice expensive painting, but you know, give away something small that costs you less than 70 bucks or so. You know, like you don't want to charge, you don't want to give them something crazy, but something that's still nice for them to get. And you can say, um, I'm doing a giveaway contest. If you like this post, comment below uh, what you like about it and then share it then you're entered into the contest. So by having them, that's something that they could win. So they're like, oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna share this, you know? So that's how I've built my following on Facebook by getting a lot of um, people to join my page from giveaway contests. I, you don't wanna do like a giveaway every week because then you're starting to lose money, but you know, you, every quarter, maybe, maybe once a year, you know, something, something that's not too often where you're not, you're not really losing too much on your profits. But it's really like, honestly, I think doing a giveaway is, better use of your money than spending money on Facebook advertising. Because Facebook advertising, you're competing with everybody else that's trying to do the same thing. And they're not, people aren't getting anything in return for it. If you do a giveaway contest, they have a chance of winning something. They already like your work. You know, they're gonna, they're more, more um, willing to get involved with your page if, if they're gonna get something out of it. But yeah, usually you, you have, so you also have to make sure you're following all the guidelines and I'll go over this at the end. I have a slide for it. Uh, but yeah, so every, every social media has their own community guidelines you have to follow. So you, you certain things you can't do in giveaways. Like, uh, you can't on Instagram, you're not supposed to say you have to follow my page and you have to share it on this and this and this, like there are certain things you're not allowed to do. So just make sure you're following those rules when you're doing a giveaway. But yeah, I'll usually give about a week. I'll say one week and then I'll, I'll like repost it again to it. I'll be like, okay, don't forget, you have three days left to win this giveaway. Make sure you share it and enter it with your friends. Yeah, and then so another great thing about Facebook is that there's a broader age group that uses Facebook. Like it seems like Instagram, most people are my age that use Instagram. Reddit is kind of all over the board. Um, but Facebook, yeah, Facebook, I like everybody uses Facebook. So it's a great way you can definitely market to your own age group or, uh, you know, wherever your target audience lies. You know, if your target audience is younger crowds, then you can reach them. If your target, target audience is people with lots of money that are retired, then <laughs> you can find them too. All right, so yeah, so this is what, uh, one of the great things about Facebook. You, know, you can arrange your page however you want, engage with viewers. Uh, you can request for people to like your page. So if people like one of your posts but they're not already following your page, you click on the everyone that liked it and it, you can scroll through it and it'll show everyone that's already liking your page. 
And if someone's not liking it yet, then you can click invite. So it see, uh, like Bill Carafa wasn't following my page yet, so I invited him. <laughs> and then he liked it, yeah. <laughs> so you just, that's how you get people to like your page. And you also can share your page and invite your friends to like it too. So that's how you just keep building your uh, following on Facebook. Promote upcoming exhibitions. And yeah, uh, Facebook, you can also create events on your page. So if you have an upcoming exhibition you want people to know about, you can make an event and you can make that public. So anybody in the area can see that and they can come. All right, any questions on Facebook? All right, Facebook's pretty straightforward. You guys are all pretty familiar with that. We do that on our iPad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, all right. <clears throat> So we went over those big main ones. So now we're gonna go over YouTube slash Amazon. And I put Amazon with YouTube because uh, you can make an Amazon Associates account where in YouTube, under your video, you leave a description talking about your video and you can say, these are the art products that I recommend. And you can link them to an Amazon page. And you um, create an Amazon Associates account where they'll give you a special link and that link is what you put under your YouTube video. If people click that link and they go to Amazon and they buy your product or they buy something else after clicking that link, Amazon gives you a commission. So you can make money from just posting links to your art products that you get from Amazon. So like I put all my oil paints, my easels that I use, um, like different mediums, uh, canvases, brushes, like even if it's not like where I specifically buy them, if it's the same brand, then it's like, yeah, same thing, yeah. <laughs> All right, so here is, so YouTube, uh, you, I recommend having some like video editing abilities because you definitely do better on YouTube if you're able to edit videos. You don't have to edit videos to post them on YouTube. You could just do like a live stream if you want or you could just like record like I am right now myself talking in this presentation. Um, and just post that without editing it. But I think that uh, videos that have editing um, where people change the scene from time to time or they show different things in between, people are, are more, like, their, their attention is kept longer. So, like, those, those channels tend to do better, people that do more editing on their videos. Uh, I use iMovie for my Mac, yeah. Uh, but there are lots of different uh, video editing software out there. Some of it's free. Um, I can do some research on that later, too. And, uh, but here is my channel trailer. So you create a trailer for your people that are new coming to your YouTube just so they can see what your uh, channel is about. There it is. I also post videos documenting my own professional art journey, including gallery exhibitions and live painting events. My website, thepaintingstube.com. This is right after I got my Art Finder account. I'm like, yeah, go to Art Finder. <laughs> On my channel, you're going to find videos that will teach you the basic concepts of landscape painting, uh, also teach you some of your brush stroke techniques and color mixing tools. I also recommend you check out the playlist. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's basically the gist of it. You just want to tell people in your channel. Uh, trailer what your page is about are you gonna teach lessons online on YouTube like I do a little bit of that are you gonna show them galleries that your artwork is in are you gonna do a vlog talking about your artistic journey and like your feelings and stuff or you know like what are you, what are you gonna go for on your YouTube channel just like let people know what it's about and then when people come to your page that's the first thing they see and then they can say okay yeah I want to subscribe and see more about what they do yeah, so that um, so YouTube, this 2.4% of my income is from um, a couple original sales that I had where they already followed me on YouTube and they said they found me on YouTube, but they actually messaged me on my website, my personal website. Uh, but I found out that they got me, they found me from YouTube. Um, but so that's a low number this year. I'm expecting that uh, percentage to go up next year because I'm really close to monetizing my YouTube account where I'll start to make money on the ads. So um, I'll put that on, that's on the next slide. So yes, yeah, so users watch your videos related to a topic of their choice. So on YouTube, you can search for anything you want to learn. If you want to learn how to paint something or if you want to find out about an artist or like the history of this, you know, thing, then you just search for what you're looking for and then a bunch of videos pop up. YouTube also has that algorithm that shows, you know, what, more popular videos go to the top. Um, people, videos that got more comments and likes will go to the top too. Uh, so YouTube, it's really important to get more subscribers because the more subscribers you have, the more people are going to view your videos and uh, that's more traffic to your artist website and your Amazon Associates account and then eventually making money on ads. 
So you want to post good quality videos of your artwork. Um, uh, you can use your iPhone, you know, it's definitely not the best quality, like I'm not one of the top YouTubers out there right now, but <laughs> uh, you, you don't want to have like poor lighting and you, you, wanna, you don't want the camera to be shaky. Some editing software lets you actually fix the shakiness when you're holding the camera. So, you know, like keep, keep in mind different ways you can edit the videos to um, be more entertaining for the viewers. And then let's see, so this is like one of my videos that has done pretty well. It has over 10,000 views. It's not, it's not like crazy, but it's uh, one of the better ones on my channel. And it's just like a acrylic sunflower painting tutorial. So I, I have the video there. And then I think at the end of the video, yeah, I say subscribe. And then I... Let's see, let's go back right here. So yeah, so I also talk about the products you can buy. So I say, oh yeah, I have prints of this painting. You can buy all these different products from my website. I have it linked in the description below this video. So anybody that watches this video now can see where to buy these prints. And uh, also my materials that I use in the description also link my other social media accounts. So people can find everything they need and buy from me, you know, it's right there for them. Uh, so on YouTube, it's important to post on a schedule. Uh, it usually people that are successful on YouTube post once to twice a week at the same time on the same day every week so that their followers know. So it's the same thing as watching a show on TV, right? Like if you know it's on Monday nights at 8 p.m. and you're like, okay, time to sit down and watch this. So that's, that's kind of how you want your YouTube channel to be so people know when to watch. Yep, and you can also share your videos on, so if you put a YouTube video up on YouTube, uh, you can also share that video by copying the link below the video and post it on your Facebook page, or you can make like a pin for it on Pinterest. Uh, you could put the link to that in your uh, in Instagram. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's another way that you can help get other people to look at it. Uh, but the algorithms on the other social media platforms try to keep you off YouTube so they don't make those do very well on other social media platforms. So yeah, include links to your artist website, prints, and your artist shop, and your video. Make sure you talk about it in the video so people know to look in the description to find all that stuff. All right, so um, here's how you can make money on YouTube without selling any art pieces from your YouTube. No one buys anything, but you're still making money on YouTube. Uh, so once you get a thousand, this, is take, this takes a while. So it's taken me a year and a half and I'm almost there. <laughs> some, for some people it's faster, but you need to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in the last 365 days. So I'm pretty close to that. Um, and once you hit that threshold, then uh, you click a little thing in your settings to monetize your account and YouTube will review your account and make sure you're not putting up any copyright uh, copywritten stuff so that you can actually make money off of it and then they'll start playing ads on your videos and you'll start to make a percentage um, of money from every ad that is on your video and when people click the ads I think you get more money uh, so that's good uh, that's probably where I'll start to make a little more next year and that's another reason why I like to do the lessons like art lessons on YouTube because people are more likely to watch your videos if you're gonna teach them something um, and then yes the Amazon Associates I talked about a little bit and then, uh, yeah, eventually once you get enough subscribers to your channel, then companies like that sell paint products or uh, different materials that are involved in your painting, they'll actually sponsor videos for you and they'll pay you to, to put up a video and talk about their products, which I have not done yet. <laughs> so that's YouTube. Does anybody have questions about YouTube? YouTube's a lot of work. I don't recommend starting with YouTube. I recommend starting with something a little easier because <laughs> it's very, like, I definitely spend like two to... 15 hours a week just making editing videos for YouTube. So it takes a long time. It depends on how, how edited the video is and how long the video is. All right. That's just um, editing. That's just editing, yeah. So like to up... What do you think is your total? Per total per probably somewhere between five and 20 hours a week probably I spend on YouTube. <laughs> a lot of it... So I'll, I'll edit the video like during my normal work day and then I'll just spend time commenting on people's videos and like liking other people's videos and interacting with my followers at dinner. <laughs> so I'll sit there, like I'll eat dinner with my husband and then we'll watch TV and I'll just like reply to a bunch of people on YouTube during dinner. So like I don't really like keep track of that amount of time because I don't want to think about that. <laughs> but yeah, I spend a lot of time on YouTube. How long, how long usually are your, your videos? Usually, so you don't want to post too many videos that are too long or else people aren't going to watch them. They're like, I don't know, this is too long. Uh, so usually my videos are between 10 minutes and 20 minutes long. 
sometimes I'll post like a quick time lapse where I'll cut down, like I'll, I'll spend 10 hours on a painting and then I'll uh, speed up that video footage so that it's down to three minutes and then I'll post that on YouTube. Those do really well, they get a lot of views, but like for actually making money on YouTube, those are bad. Like for actually making money on YouTube, you wanna have like about 15 minute long videos because um, the, then you get more watch hours because people are watching for a longer amount of time. The three to five ones, the how to ones, like for like a how to thing, you want to yeah. learn something really quick. Do like a, like a, this is how you do like this one specific thing, like uh -huh. paint or something. Like oh, sure, like yeah. Like yeah, if it's something like that, you could definitely yeah, do that. Like a, like Absolutely. That right. Like or, yeah. If you're just showing a specific <laughs> brush stroke. Right, right. Right, yeah, that you could do in three to five minutes, and people would love that, yeah. I haven't done a lot of that yet, though. <laughs> yeah, but that's a really good idea. Yeah, I usually just do like a full painting. Yeah, I don't so let's go to Fine Art America. So Fine Art America, 2.4% of my gross income. Um, who already has Fine Art America? You do? Anybody else? No? Okay, so Fine Art America is great because you can just uh, upload nice quality images of your work. It has to be high resolution so that you can blow it up for prints. So uh, for Fine Art America, do not take pictures of your artwork with your iPhone and put it on Fine Art America, okay? Because <laughs> it's not going to be the right resolution. It's, it's only going to be uh, able to be blown up to like a 9 inch by 12 inch photo or else it's going to start getting... Uh, Pixelated, yeah. So you have to have you have to have a nice camera or a scanner, and you have to take good quality, professional grade, like print quality. You can even take it to a print shop and tell them that you want them to do this for you, uh, and get good quality images of your work that you can upload to this site. Uh, so, th um, so they, they take up to 25 megabytes uh, for an image. So I do it in the pixels, and my, I do my, in uh, Affinity Photo is the photo editing software I use, and I'll scan them. I'll scan them at 600, so they can be blown up really big, um, and then I will make sure that it's under 25 megabytes, so it still brings it down. Um, so they can take, I, I try to get as close to 25 as I can, so it's the best quality, biggest. Do you have a really big scanner? No, I don't. It's, it's a pain in the ass. So I, I, have a, I have a 9 by 12 scanner, and when I have big paintings, I do pieces at a time and then I edit them and stitch them yeah so it's it's a uh, it's tough sometimes because I don't know why because it's, a, it's scanning the same thing every time but sometimes the um, the exposure is lower on certain scans and if I redo it it'll do it better but uh, yeah so I, I only have a $300 scanner I don't have like a thousand dollar scanner so I don't know well if I didn't want to get one I want to take take my paint somewhere that it can be scanned properly yes like I, go, I used to go to FedEx uh, also not the you know best scanner on the market, but uh, they have a larger scanner. Can, I think that one can get like 12 by 16 maybe. So this is kind of a social media platform for artists, Fine Art America. So um, there's a community contest that you can join uh, after you make your page and you can start adding your artworks to free contests on this community thing where you're just getting more exposure really. You don't have to win the contest, but people are seeing your artwork <laughs> that are also joining the contest. So it gets you more exposure that way. Um, you also can join groups that are specific to your style of art or like the concept, you know, whatever type of work you're creating. Like if you do a lot of pets, then you can join a, a pet paintings group or something like that. And you can just, uh, you know, connect with other artists that do similar things as you. Uh, and whenever you upload a piece of artwork, you can actually tag it to be in all of those groups. So it'll show up in those groups too. So yeah, it's, it's great for getting exposure to other artists just as you know, a social media type of thing. And then the public can also view your page as well. Uh, they can just come to the site, fineartamerica.com and they can search for something that they want up in their house as a print. Uh, it's usually prints. You can type the, um, the price of the original and if it's available on your page, but I've only had one person ask me about an original on here. Most people want prints. He actually didn't buy the original either because he wanted a print that was less expensive but larger than the original. So he was like, okay, I'll get a print that's twice as big for less money than the original. I think I'm doing that. So I was like, okay, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can put your artwork into different collections, which are basically like photo albums of your art. So I have golf courses, national parks, Hawaii landscapes, sunset, sunsets, or seascapes, <laughs> Pittsburgh, uh, mountain landscapes, sunrises and sunsets, flowers, pet portraits, and then cultural paintings. And uh, if you were to click on any of these, it would take you into the album that has all the different images that you could buy. And uh, you can put, they're not technically hashtags because they don't have like the, the, the hashtag symbol, but under an art piece, you can 
put certain tags for words that would apply. So when someone's searching, this will make these pieces pop up under that search. Uh, Fine Art America is free for up to 30 images that you upload. Once you upload 31, then it's going to charge you $30 a year, which is not bad at all, really. I mean, it's the same as any other art organization you would join, and you are definitely, I mean, I would, I would, I think if you have th at least 30 pieces of artwork and you're like active on there and putting your artwork out there and you're getting views, there's no way you're not going to sell a single print that's going to make up for that 30 bucks, you know? Uh, what else? So yeah, public can view your page, order prints, more visitors to your site, page equals more print sales. Uh, another great thing about Fine Art America is that um, you can put your shopping cart for your prints on your own website. Uh, so these are some of the print products that you can order. So you can get framed prints, canvas prints, metal prints, acrylic prints, wood prints, greeting cards, tote bags, notebooks, shower curtains, like all kinds of stuff. Does Fine Art America print them? They do. So it's a print to order website. So all you have to do on your end is upload the art. That's all you do. And then you say uh, what your markup is. And you say like, okay, for uh, a canvas print that's gonna be 12 inches by 12 inches, I want $10 on top of whatever you sell it for. So, so you can get them matted, because usually matte my prints. Yeah, oh yeah, if you, if you upload your own artwork and then you order it from them with a mat on it, yeah, they'll, they'll ship it to you, yeah. Can you, do yep. you add new artwork and take off old stuff after a while? I don't, I, I don't, what I, the only thing I've done is that when I first started, I was using iPhone pictures. So I, I, I'll go back now and I'll scan my older stuff and I'll fix them and I'll, I'll re-upload like a better version of that picture. But I don't take anything down because there's always a chance that someone's going to see something they're interested in and be like, oh. And they can use that. Once, once it's in there, they can Once it's there, it's there. Yeah, yep. Unless you decide to completely remove it. Right, exactly. Yep. You can keep the original. Right, right, right. So, yeah, so, so yeah. this is my example. This I, I haven't sold this original because it's only 10 inches by 10 inches, but I've sold over like 15 prints of that piece. And it's uh, people like that print, but it's, no one wants the original because it's so little. <laughs> I don't, or they don't know it's available. I don't know, so either how or. Big, how big can they make the print of that? Uh, it depends on the file size. So uh, on here, this one goes up to 48 inches by 48 inches. So they can make it pretty big. Uh, I think the biggest one I've seen is like 72 inches, I think I've seen. I think they make them pretty big. It depends on your file size. Uh, so yeah. File size is small. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. If your file size is small, uh, so what I did was so stupid. I, <laughs> it was the blondest thing I have ever done. So I would take, <laughs> I would take iPhone pictures and I would put them into my editing thing, and then I would be like, okay, I want to make this bigger. So I would make it a bigger file size, but it would it change the <laughs> resolution so it was so it was a big file size so they were like oh it's a big file size okay okay you can go down to five feet with this one and then someone would order something that was like two feet and they'd be like this is really pixelated or like i would so so that's another thing it's like you have no idea who buys your stuff and where it's going that you have no connection with this, the, the person so i would order prints to look at them and then to possibly sell at other places and i was like this looks terrible why does it look so terrible and then uh i was starting to work with another guy who ordered prints for me and he, he told me that and i was like oh yeah that was really good i'm really glad i talked to him yeah <laughs> so now i scan them and i know that they are going to um, look great as four feet or five foot prints so you, yeah, you enter a markup. Uh, whenever you post your artwork, this is the next page. After, after you upload it, it'll ask you, uh, so this is like a 10 inch by 10 inch, and I said I want a $10 markup on that, and you can keep going. I basically just go down in $5 increments, but you can do it however you, whatever you think's gonna work for you with sales. Um, and you don't have to worry about shipping it or anything like that. What's your most popular size in print? Um, so the most popular size? Uh, it's been all over the board, honestly. And it's, it's nothing to do with, uh, like it, it's just all over the board because it's all different people ordering it and it's all different types of things. Some of, the, some of them are square, some of them are um, like 12 by 16. Some people order them with mats on them, some people order canvas prints, some people just want the art print. I haven't really seen a trend. <laughs> I can tell you what my most popular pay, uh, print was though. It's not this one, it's, uh, it's this one down here. This one's sold a lot. It's a Augusta National Golf Course, I think, because it's such a popular course. So yeah, like I said before, another great thing you can do is embed your print shop onto your own artist website. So um, on, they have like a whole beside, behind the scenes section on the Fine Art America site. So you can uh, click that. It'll tell you all these different things you can do. Uh, and then you can 
yeah, it'll give you the form to upload it to your own artist website. So that now on my website, there's a shop and it really is just this Fine Art America thing. So anyone could click on my own website and it'll just um, let them buy prints that go through Fine Art America. Oh, so that's great. You can, you can just put that on your website. Right on my website, yeah. So it doesn't even take them to Fine Art America. They stay right there on my site, but it uh, oh, yeah, goes yeah. through. Yes, yeah, so another great thing you can do is that you can give... Uh, so if you have a newsletter that you have for your... Um, for your uh, clients, then you can give them promos. You can like, when you sign up for my newsletter, I'll give you a small discount on prints if you get this code in my newsletter. So that's another great thing is that they can provide promo codes for you. All right, so, uh, so Fine Art America is the one that I use, but there are a lot of print to order websites. I don't know if the other print to order websites are like, as much like a social media type of platform where you can connect with other artists, but I know that they, all handle like the printing and the shipping of your artwork, uh, similar to Fine Art America. So these are a couple other ones, Society6, Zazzle. I tried Zazzle for a little bit uh, and I just, I didn't make any sales on it. So I was like, eh, I'm just gonna delete everything. Uh, Minted, Artspan, and Redbubble. So you guys will get uh, all these slides too if you wanna test out any of these other platforms. I'm not sure if uh, the other ones charge you or if they're free. Done talking about a lot of these. Now we got Sachi Art. So Sachi Art is a website, also kind of like a social media platform for artists, where you um, you can like other artists' artwork. Um, that's really the extent of it. You can, I think, maybe you can comment, but you mostly just like other people's artwork and uh, follow other artists, and they can message you if they want. Uh, but I haven't really had a lot of other connections with artists on Sachi, um, and I only made like a few small sales on Sachi. Uh, so that site. So this is what my profile page on Sachi Art looks like. And uh, you have you know, a picture of yourself, you have an about section, you can type all the awards you've won, all the exhibitions you've been in down here. Uh, I think that clients like to see that, like potential art collectors like to see that you've been in awards uh, on your page. And then uh, how many people you're following, your followers, your other social medias under here. And then you have an artwork section here. So that's where you have your artworks. I only have 16 artworks on this site because I haven't been doing so well with it and it takes me a while to upload stuff. And this is one of those sites where like if you post a thousand things, then you're gonna be making more sales. It's just the, the type of work that you put out there. Uh, they also let you sell prints, but I haven't sold any prints on there. You can, you can just upload whatever nice quality image you post of your artwork. They can make it available for prints. So yeah, when you do sell a piece, they'll send you an email when your piece is sold. So that's a little bit like, there's no other way. Like if, if you, if you miss that email, then you're like, oh, <laughs> they'll send you another email like three days later. Like, Hey, this is the last day you have to accept that this piece sold, you know? So you have to kind of be you know, thinking about your emails. So yeah, so once they sell it, uh, they take a commission and then uh, they also expect you to pay for shipping. So like they say in the thing that, sh that the client charges, pays for the shipping, but when I did my sales, both times I had to like pay for my own materials to ship it and then ship it. So keep that in mind when you're pricing your artwork. So you, you do the shipping yourself? You do, so yeah, so you'll, um, they'll say, hey, your artwork sold, you have three days uh, to get the piece together and ready to ship in our specific way that we make you package it. Like they make you put plastic around it first, then bubble wrap, then put these little cardboard corners on the edges and then put it in a box. <laughs> so they do like very specific. Uh, and then um, they have uh, either like a FedEx guy or someone come to your house to pick it up. And then they pick it up and they do everything else. And yeah, so it's, it's very important to make sure you have an accurate description of your work on here. Because if you put the wrong artwork size or your artwork doesn't look like it, whenever, you know, I haven't had any issues with it, but I can imagine someone being upset and I'm not sure what the process would be if your client doesn't want to pay for it. So here's an example of what your pricing so that you say what your price is. Um, so on my own artist website, if you were to buy this piece, it'd be 700 on here. It's 715. Uh, is what I've said my price is because if they do a discount on their site, they'll take a cut from you and they'll take a cut from themselves without you even knowing about it. So I'd put a little bit up there so that I'm still making a little bit even if they put it on sale. Um, and then it tells you there, uh, it says see shipping and handling paid by collector, but then they don't give you that money. So I don't really know what happens there. Uh, and then a piece of the price of the whole artwork. So then it, like they sum that all up and it's 1200 bucks. So a painting that's 700 bucks on my site is 1200 bucks on this site. So, you know, but people that are shopping on the site don't know about me or my own site. So they're like, okay. And I think it's also like an insurance thing. People know that if they're buying from this site, that if anything goes wrong, they'll get their money back. But if they're buying from an artist directly, you know, there could be a scam involved or anything like that. 
Sachi would be a great route for someone that can produce a lot of artwork quickly and easily and never traveled and always looking for Right. Yeah, someone that yeah, is always yeah, you're someone that just is once you start selling a lot on there, I'll bet you probably stick with it. So, I don't know. There are people that sell a lot on there. All right, so Artfinder is similar to Sachi because it's an artist um, website, but I think they, I mean, just their like user friendliness is way better. Like their site feels way nicer than Sachi. I, I like feel more connected with other artists on Artfinder than I do on Sachi. Um, so they have a free program, they have a standard program, and they have a professional program. Um, so the thing with Artfinder is that they don't just let anybody upload their artwork to their site. You have to put in an application. It takes like three months for them to approve or deny you, and then you can start selling your work if you're approved. Um, Sachi just lets anybody upload their artwork and anybody can sell. Uh, so once you get on there, I started with a standard program where you pay $5 a month because it's interesting. It'll show, it'll say um, two, two of your paintings are in someone's shopping cart and you're like, okay, well, how do I convert that to buying the painting? And they don't tell you how to do that and they don't tell you whose shopping cart's in and they don't, and then the people never bought it. That's the weirdest thing. Like, I, like a few times a week, I would look at this and I'd be like, okay, there's a painting. It tells you what painting. It's like this painting is in someone's shopping cart. This painting is in someone's shopping cart. And then it, three days later, it would be gone. You're like, <laughs> but so I haven't made any actual sales on Artfinder yet. Um, but I've noticed like a few other, other artists that I follow on Instagram have done pretty well on the site. And uh, they have the professional package where they pay 12 bucks a month and they get promotions where they, um, their artwork is put on the homepage and, and people see it on the homepage. So I think like if I were to invest more time and money into it, I'd probably see some return, but yeah, I haven't really. Uh, that one, you know, I haven't dealt with that yet, uh, but I'm assuming that we ship it. I'm assuming the artist still ships it. Okay. Yeah, I'd have to look into that again. Um, when it's a big painting, I get boxes from FedEx, uh, or not from FedEx, uh, well, you could get them from FedEx, but uh, Home Depot, <laughs> actually, is where I get my big ones. Cause they have, um, like, moving, moving boxes, and they're really heavy duty, they're nice, and I feel like my pieces are safe in those. Uh, and then other than that, um, it's kind of dinky, but I get, I order a lot of stuff from Amazon, so my smaller paintings I put in Amazon boxes, I reuse them, and I just package them in nice um, brown crafting paper so it doesn't look like an Amazon box. <laughs> it looks nicer, yeah. <laughs> I know, that's true, yeah. Don't rip off the paper, just cut it open and get the painting out, yeah. <laughs> Is this a site that you have to put a resume or something? Yes. Yeah. I think you had to put your resume before you upload it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of a hassle to get in. Yeah. So I, I think that they asked you to upload your resume and then they, um, something like your exhibitions or something like that. They wanted to know that you're like a legit artist <laughs> when you, when you, um, apply for that one. So this is what an art finder page looks like. So I have like, you know, a featured painting, your profile picture, and then it's nice because it just has all your artworks right there. Sachi has like this little box you have to click to see the paintings, but this one just has them all in a nice organized way. Uh, and then you can also click on me at work and it'll show, you can include your YouTube videos on here or you can include uh, news articles where you've been in recent exhibitions, things like that. Um, and then there's another section that is, what does that one say? about and that one you talk about your history what inspires you almost like an artist statement type of thing uh, and then you also put all of your um, exhibitions and awards that you've won so it's nice it's, it's like a nice place where I just like to keep track of my exhibitions because it's so like organized <laughs> yeah so it does seem that like artists that invest money into sat into uh, art finder are the ones that tend to make more sales and you know, I'm not sure how well that translates into the sales, the, how much they put into it versus how much they get out of it. I'm not sure how well that translates. When you say exhibitions, do you mean one person shows or? Anything, yeah. Any, if your piece was in a show, then I put it in there and I just say group exhibition. Oh, okay. Yeah. What was the commission on that one? Uh, so, that one uh, depends on your package. So if you do the free package, it's 40%. And then if you do one of the paid packages, they take a 33% commission. Yeah. So yeah, you know, and obviously uh, make your pricing to reflect what they're going to take out of it. All right. So Wedding Wire, uh, we don't have a lot of live event painters here, but Wedding Wire made a decent amount of my gross income in the last 12 months. Um, and that is because for a live event painting, I charge a lot more than I would charge just to do a commission painting. Uh, because they're getting the entertainment aspect as well from me going out there and painting and people talking to me. So um, that's why I... Do it away. 
I I'll take yeah, it is a lot of fun. So I'll take my easel. I'll st I'll put, put the setup, the stand up easel, and I'll uh, get, you know see the scene that I'm gonna paint, and I'll start to paint the scene before the bride and groom are there, just to get like the room set up, and then uh, I'll talk to the bride and groom before the wedding and see if they want me to paint their cake cutting scene or the first dance or the toast. Uh, you know whatever they say and then I'll make sure I'm painting that scene and then whenever they enter the scene I'll take a picture because I I'm not good at painting from memory so I take a picture and then I have a little phone holder um, on my easel that I'll it'll have the photo of them in it and then I'll start to add them to the painting uh, the smallest one is 18 by 24 and the biggest one is 24 by 36 yeah 24 by 36 ones take a while so I, I, I say uh, eight weeks after the wedding it'll be done but I give I give myself some time there yeah so wedding wire is a platform um, for people that are looking for vendors for their wedding usually they're looking for a place to have their wedding uh, they're looking for someone to marry them or they're looking for photographers or a DJ uh, or they're also looking for some entertainment so I'm in the entertainment side of this and I say I do live event painting at weddings uh, I have a page that just talks about uh, what I do and I say um, here's a link to my website for package information I have the basic level of this website you can pay to get like a really nice flashy one they'll put you at the top and everybody gets you you know your, your business seen um, but I honestly like I'm so busy with commissions I I don't really invest the time into this but I probably should invest more time into this since I make more money doing less work so up to 20% of my income could have been from Pinterest from people coming um, to my website and just you know they just didn't they said that they saw me somewhere else or something but they or, or they got a print from Fine Art America because I link a lot of my prints onto Pinterest so uh, and another thing when you're on Fine Art America you can there's a little thing right below it that you can say post on Pinterest and it'll post it for you right on Pinterest so that's nice you don't have to put a lot of work into it so yeah I try to put as many images up on Pinterest as I can Pinterest, you basically, it's all images again. You just scroll through a bunch of images. You can follow people. Uh, you can use How hashtags. Many hashtags can you use there? Uh, that's a good question. I've only, tr I've only used like six for a post. I don't really go too crazy because uh, it'll show you, it'll make the hashtag bold if it's popular. And if it's not popular, then it's like, don't even bother with this hashtag, you know? So yeah, I, I'll use like um, hashtag painting, hashtag golf course, whatever the place is, like hashtag California for that one, uh, hashtag uh, travel golf. I don't know, like uh, things that I think would be related that people would be searching for. Yep. Uh, save pins yeah so you can save pins from other artists thing you can make collaborative groups where artists uh, all pin each other's pins so like it helps the pin get more popular uh, sometimes you can pin your YouTube videos I'll do that too but the YouTube ones don't do so well uh, and then the yeah, ad so it also gives you analytics so it'll tell you how many people saw it 1.6 K uh, so 1,600 people saw that pin one person clicked the link Oh, four, late, four, four people clicked the link, one person saved it. So it just gives you some uh, analytical info about who's looking at your stuff, how many times it's being saved, what's popular. Pinterest is, uh, is great, just as like an extra thing. Uh, Twitter, I'm not huge on Twitter. I've seen some artists are pretty popular on Twitter. Um, I'm, I'm not like a super opinionated person that likes to talk about how I'm feeling and like talk about things happening via words. I like using images more. So uh, Twitter's not really my thing. Twitter's more about the words. Uh, recently, Twitter has become more image focused. I, I guess you could say uh, a lot of people post images of their artwork on Twitter, uh, but I don't ever really post just like words on Twitter. I will link my uh, Fine Art America to my Twitter. So whenever I post a new print, it'll show up on Twitter saying this piece is now available and uh, it gives you a couple hashtags that go with it. So yeah, pin Twitter. Twitter is a. Tw is anybody on Twitter? No. Yeah. It's, it it could be good, but I haven't found uh, much much help from it yet. And then Etsy is another one. People always ask me if I have an Etsy shop, and I say no. <laughs> so Etsy can be great for some artists. I really think it could, and I've seen a lot of successful artists on Etsy. A lot of artists on Etsy will actually post a painting, uh, and then they'll they'll have that same painting for sale like 10 times and they'll just recreate the same painting 10 times. I can't imagine doing that. I can't imagine like repainting the same thing 10 times, <laughs> but they do that. Some, some artists, um, but because my, because of my pricing and my style, I don't think 
uh, Etsy is the right route for me. It all goes back to your target audience again. If you're selling uh, pieces of work that are you know less than several hundred dollars and you can produce a lot of them, then maybe Etsy is a better route. But uh, for me, Etsy just has not been uh, something I want to invest my time into. All right, so additional helpful tips uh, for marketing and selling your artwork online. This kind of is generic across all of the social media platforms. So the more people you're getting to view your site, the more people that are going to see your artwork, the more people are going to buy it. So that's just in general. Try to you know be as en engaging as you can with your followers and uh, do what you can to get more people to, on your site because that's how you're going to end up um, getting more sales. Giveaways are a great way to boost your following. So we talked that, uh, about that a little bit. I have giveaways before. I've done it on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, I found that Facebook has been the best place for me to do giveaways because uh, it, Facebook just feels more personal. Uh, I feel like, yeah, it just feels more personal, yeah. Uh, and I, I've definitely had more, um, uh, yeah, so artists enters a contest on their page to win a print painting or an art set uh, and then uh, make sure that you follow the guidelines like I said um, you, and you can just search for Facebook community guidelines for giveaways and then on, on Google or something and it'll give you all those uh, all those guidelines you need to follow um, and often giveaway winners turn into clients uh, because they're happy with you made a connection with them they're happy with what they received and they want more so it's, it's a great way to just really build some real clients uh, and then if possible, have your followers share the post to get it more engaged with other people as well. So if it's in the guidelines to require them to share the post as part of the giveaway, then try to do that. Try to get people to share it. Uh, post often. So this is across everything. Uh, you want to remain relevant. You don't want people to forget about you. You know, you... <laughs> which is a pain because it's like some days you just really don't feel like posting anything and you can use certain other, there are certain apps where you can run your accounts for you and you can say, uh, I want to schedule this Instagram post for tomorrow at five o'clock and you can do that, but I haven't really done that yet. I haven't really invested time into that. Um, but yeah, just make sure that you're posting often on Instagram, uh, three to, to five times a week, uh, and make sure you have enough good quality stuff. Like if it's either going to be, Oh, I have to post five times a week, but this is not a good quality photo, but that's all I have to post. Don't post it. Only post the good stuff. If you're going to post less often, but post good quality stuff, that's more important. I have to have my own website if I have my own page and put it on Facebook. Uh, no, you don't have to. No. Facebook is, is pretty good now. Yeah, you can, you can put a shop in your Facebook page now. Right. So yeah, if you want to make your, your Facebook page be your website, because it's easier to manage, then just do that and then link uh, an Instagram to your Facebook page for people to, for the shop, for them to find all your work. All right. And then, yeah, just uh, engage with your followers. Make sure you let them know about upcoming events. Uh, and recent accomplishments. So if you had a media, media article written about you for an art, art exhibition you were just in, you want to post you know, a screenshot of that news article. Uh, if you sold a piece, you want to let people know that you're selling pieces uh, so that you know, people want to buy things when they know other people are buying them. <laughs> uh, what else? Yeah, any, any recognition that you can talk about. Like it's, sometimes it's kind of annoying because you don't want to only talk about yourself and all the good things that you've done, but you kind of have to for people to want to buy from you. Like you have to show that confidence when you're selling. Yeah. All right. Additional tips. Yeah. So, oh yeah, there is where it was. Okay. Use small resolution sizes when you're posting artwork, uh, unless it's for the fine art printing sites where it's safe. Cause you don't want anyone to steal your images. Uh, don't be an aggressive salesperson in your posts. Don't be like, you have to buy this painting right now. You know, like not like any of you would do that, but <laughs> just, uh, you know, sometimes I found that just saying the title of the painting, the dimensions, and then, um, message me to purchase this piece has been the most successful thing not like directly telling people all the stuff about it and how they have to buy it. Uh, post between three to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, around noon on Saturday to Sunday. Uh, engage with your audience. Uh, yeah, so okay, yeah, another thing is that, so all this information I gave you was from my last year of sales, okay? Don't expect you jumping into this in your first week to sell 100K worth of paintings, okay? It's gonna be a slow build up and it's really slow when you start out and you have to really put time into it for people to uh, engage with you and just build up your audience. And then I think once you start getting your, you know, your, your footing and you, like, you're realizing how that platform works, then you can find out how to start building faster and faster. But it does take a lot of time uh, unless you end up spending money on the, the fake things to build your following, you know, it's, it does take time. 
and yeah, each platform has its own unique community. So find one uh, that you think you're going to fit best with, where people can connect with you, and you know, you'll end up making a lot of new friends. Like I have met friends on YouTube that are in UK, India, Australia. It's really cool. You just you make a lot of new friends. And then, yeah, and also another really important thing that I didn't say much is that if you have an art page, don't post something that's not your art. Only post your art if it's related to your art or something about your art, your, your, you know, your journey as an artist. You don't want to post things that are political. You don't want to post things that, you know, have nothing to do with your artwork because you're going to get people to stop following you. All right, things you need to get started. Okay, so for getting started, you need a plan. You know, like, what do you want your image to look like? Do you want, you know, you, do you want to make your images reach out to, you know, the upper class or do you want to post like a million images and like just, you know, try to get like the general public involved in your art, you know, think about who you're trying to reach. Uh, and then also um, set a, an annual goal for yourself. So my goal this year was to monetize my YouTube account, which I'm just going to miss, but <laughs> I think I'm going to just get it in like January next year with like the trend of my on my on my page but uh, it's, it's good to set a goal for yourself because even if you don't reach it you're still making progress and you're still doing well uh, and, you know with your subscribers and stuff too I think I, I also was trying to be at like 8,000 subscribers or 8,000 followers on Instagram and I'm only at like 4,000 so that didn't happen either but it's alright see so sometimes you you have these expectations they don't happen but you still make sales out of it and you're still because you set that goal you're, you're making more progress than you would have if you didn't set a goal hey, getting paintings off my wall would be good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll stick in there with my kids when I die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good to make some sales. <laughs> All right. Yep. Set up your art accounts on your platform of your choice. Uh, so you might need uh, a tripod. So like something like this with my camera like that is what I'll use to take photos of myself while I'm doing work in progress paintings. And I'll post those on um, Instagram. This tripod I think is like 20 bucks on Amazon and it's got paint all over it too. They, they last for a long time. Uh, so if you want something like that, that can help you get photos of yourself. Um, you can also like set up your phone like propped against something if you don't want to buy a tripod. Uh, yeah, so use a self timer if you're going to take pictures of yourself while you're working. So you guys know there's a, a timer. You can make it wait 10 seconds before it takes a picture. I'm assuming everyone has iPhones. I shouldn't do that. Who, yeah, <laughs> but in, in, in iPhones, you can set a timer uh, or in a lot of other cameras too. You can set a timer. So set a timer so you can walk up to get a picture of you while you're painting uh, or get a buddy to help you take pictures of you. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Uh, so a microphone, so I have this little microphone here. They make Bluetooth microphones too that don't have a cord, uh, but this one's less expensive, so I'm using this guy. Uh, so when you're doing videos, the microphone is really helpful because you sound more clear. You sound terrible if you're not, you know, if you're not facing the camera, then you sound terrible if you don't have a microphone on. Good quality photos of your artwork. That's the most important thing. Very important. Editing software to edit photos. So yeah, I use Affinity Photo. Uh, you also have an iPhone. In the iPhone, there's a photo editing you can do uh, with your with the photos tool. Uh, and then Instagram lets you edit as well. But those two aren't aren't as good. I, Affinity Photo is really good, but I think you you have to pay a subscription for that. Photoshop. I used to use Photoshop, and then we switched to Affinity Photo because it's less expensive and it does the same stuff. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, also a scanner or a good camera, yep, for creating prints of your artwork or go to a print shop to have them uh, do that for you. And then, yep, uh, FedEx and Staples, you can also scan your artwork there. They have, de they have decent scanners. When you go to a public scanner though, um, take a little cloth with you so you can wipe off the scanner because a lot of times people's fingerprints get on them. All right guys, that concludes this presentation. Thank you so much for joining me and sticking around for about an hour and a half of this lecture. Uh, I really enjoyed teaching this class and I hope you found it beneficial and uh, you're able to apply some of these tools for selling your own artwork online. Uh, this video was presented in October of 2019. So as uh, time moves on, technology is going to change and these social media platforms are going to change as well. So uh, just keep in mind the date uh, of this video when you are uh, reviewing this information. And if you have any additional comments or questions for me, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. And uh, there are no dumb questions, so go ahead and leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And if you have any uh, additional helpful information in the comment section, I will uh, read through that and I can maybe add that to my description below this video. And uh, if we have any changes that uh, occur on these social media platforms or if I said anything that you felt was incorrect, uh, let me know as well and I will uh, adjust that in the description section below. I'll just leave some notes. Uh, so 
that's it again and uh, thanks for joining me have a great day and good luck becoming successful artists bye bye <laughs>